Welcome back to Mock the Mock, where I take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I mock it, giving you my thoughts, views, and opinions. Today, we look at Josh Edwards from CBS Sports, because everyone talks crap about CBS having the worst mock draft. So let's go ahead. Let's take a look at this one. Let's see if it's really as bad as it seems. Was going to do Alex's uh, from the Hail Mary podcast. But uh, his comes out in 16 hours, premieres tomorrow. Go check that out. By the way, I'm gonna have my own mock draft out tomorrow, so you're gonna get a, you're gonna be getting good content. If you love the NFL draft, then oh man, what a time to be alive! You're gonna get hail marys. You're gonna get mine. Oh my gosh, look at that. But let's go ahead, take a look at this sucker. But what's crackalackin'? It is your boy Broshmo. Just in case you did not know, so. Uh, go ahead, become a bro, and subscribe. Leave that thumbs up if you enjoy the content. As always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm going to hit this, make it a little bit larger. And let's go ahead into the first pick being uh, Houston Texans. They're taking Kayvon Thibodeau. There we go. Kayvon Thibodeau. I, I get this pick. I understand. If you're not sold on the quarterback class, which not a lot of people are, me included. Uh, go with the best prospect. Guess what? The defense. This is this whole team's in rebuild. They got a bunch of veteran talent on one or two year contracts. Uh, they're gonna have to. They're gonna do something with Deshaun Watson. He's never playing in Houston again, or at least for Houston again. But um, yeah. So Thibodeau makes a ton of sense. The guy's probably the top edge rusher in this class. Uh, he's a great prospect. I will. I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I think I would consider Malik Willis here. Cause looking at this quarterback class, you might not love it, but everyone knows this Malik Willis has tremendous upside. The guy is one of the best running quarterbacks we've seen since like a, a Cam Newton, a Lamar Jackson. Not entirely similar. I would say Malik Willis is more similar to Cam than he is Lamar. He's not nearly as elusive as Lamar, but I think he can take more. He could take much more contact, much like Cam. Uh, and the dude's got a huge arm, and we've seen improvements in his ball placement and accuracy and his mechanics. Malik Willis could very well be probably the top quarterback in this class and could be worthy of first overall pick. But I understand if you're not sold on this class and you go elsewhere. At number two, Evan Neal going to the Jags makes a ton of sense. The Jags suck. <laughs> Oh, uh, we can assume maybe Urban Meyer is not the coach at this point anymore because shenanigans. But you got to protect your top signal caller being Trevor Lawrence, man. He's the future. Uh, Cam Robinson, he's on franchise tag. He's not coming back. At least I think it'd be wise if they don't give him significant money. Even if he does come back, it, it, don't be paying him like premium. He, I don't think he's worth that. Uh, Jawan Taylor's had his ups and downs. Um, you do have Walker Little there in the wings, but you don't really know what you got in him. So Evan Neal, I think, makes a ton of sense. At number three, it's the Detroit Lions picking Kyle Hamilton. He's a blue chip prospect. He's a banger, dude. Pairing him up with Tracy Walker, I think, is deadly. It really helps that very young but I think promise in secondary, because keep in mind, Kuda, dude, I, he has those shutdown cornerback traits. He's got not, he's gotten off to a really rough start with last year. Being injured, having to go through D-Hop and Devontae Adams with his first two matchups. He had the abdominal injury, and now he's out for the season this year. Very tough road. But the talents there, Ifatu Malafonwu, another guy with tremendous potential. So this secondary begins to look a lot scary, adding Kyle Hamilton to the mix. Again, if you're not sold on the quarterback class. And Jared Goff's been serviceable. I think you could probably pump another year out of him if you want. So, yeah, I understand it. Real quick, a word from our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. If you're looking to make a little extra cash money doing something you're good at, and since you... Since you're watching this video, I imagine you know a little something about football. Then go ahead, download Underdog Fantasy. They got weekly best ball leagues. They got player prop bets. I got the Monday night's games going on right now, and I got some player prop bets that I'm hoping hits big. And they do pick'ems. So download Underdog Fantasy. Use promo code BROSHMO. 
it gets you ten dollars upon your first ten dollar deposit so you throw in ten they're like here now you have 20. so supports the channel they support me help me help you you get money yeah i guess back to the video what an ad <laughs> At number four, we got the New York Jets going Derek Steenley. Top corner on my board. Uh, might Probably won't play the rest of the season because of I think it's a foot injury. But uh, he's going to be – he's extremely athletic. He's probably going to test out athletically among the best at the cornerback position. He's got those shutdown traits. People are like, oh, he's so inconsistent. Again, two games against Devontae and a game against UCLA. Outside of that, he has been shut down. He's been pretty darn spectacular. So, yeah, he's pretty darn good. Uh, and to be fair, in that UCLA game, the times he was beat, he was shoved into the slot. We know this guy's an outside corner. Uh, and he's at his best when he's in the face of a defender playing or a uh, face of a receiver playing press. So, yeah, given Kyle Phillips out of UCLA a free release, it was. Just not smart, man. Because especially on the touchdown, dude, he just he just kind of dragged Steenley to the opposite side. Steenley was able to get a good angle on him, but then horrifically missed the tackle. But still, Steenley is a wonderful prospect. To me, he's going to be the top corner in this class until proven otherwise. It, it, literally, he'd have to bomb at the combine. I'm, I'm pretty sold on Steenley. And then we got the Atlanta Falcons. And number five, going George Karloftis. I kind of like this because I think schematically it's a good fit. They need help pass, uh, rushing the passer. For me, Karloftis. I mean, it, we're still early in our in in our uh, evaluations, as you would say. I get if you have other guys higher than. I mean, people are gonna feel different ways about different prospects. To me, Aiden Hutchinson, Kingsley. Anek Bari, those are the next top two guys at edge, and both those guys definitely could. I can see a role there in Atlanta for them. So I don't know. I'm just higher on those two guys than I am a Karloftis, who for me is not doesn't nearly have doesn't have better bend those those guys. Has I think significantly shorter arms length than those guys. So I'd rather roll with those guys, but. I get it. Karloff is still a wonderful prospect. I, this is just too high for me, in my opinion. And then at number six, the New York Giants. This picks from the Bears. They go Andrew Booth. Andrew Booth's the next corner on their board. Um, I get investing in the corner position. It's kind of been up and down this year for the Giants after being very promising last year. Adoree Jackson, I think Adoree Jackson's played pretty good football. He's just kind of mit whiffed on some potential picks this year uh james bradbury you see noticeable regression from last year being a breakout year but you you know what that guy's capable of so i mean it doesn't bother me strengthening it a position that's again so volatile keep in mind james bradbury was top five corner last year he ain't really playing like it right now it's a very volatile position uh but for me booth is not the next corner or it shouldn't be the next corner off the board his last two games against i think boston college georgia tech no boston college nc state there we go um i think they they've been shaky they've been real shaky they talk about all oh, oh derek steenley is in consistency well booth this is our first real shot seeing him in a starting role and he was really good to start the year and like these last two games have been kind of like ooh, ooh, we're starting to see the the wrinkles the uh see some of the negative in his game but uh, i don't i uh, i get it dude's a wonderful athlete it's it's tough but i think i would value maybe Tre i i, I think Ka uh, kair elam is definitely number two for me uh and then i think you can make a case why maybe sauce and um trent mcduffie could go ahead of booth you can make that case uh the next pick is again the new york giants but this is their pick and there go kenyan green out of Texas A&M. Kenny Green is coming off a really bad Arkansas game where he got beat bad by um, Trey Williams. Because uh, Green had to go, like, he was started the game right tackle or right guard, and then they had moved him to left tackle, and it was just, it, 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 was, it was a bad idea. It's it's not great 
it's not great footage it's it's unfortunate but i still think there's a lot of promise in green let's see how he was uh this past weekend believe it or not i didn't watch texas a&m this past weekend okay all uh, right they had him back okay well left guard is his natural position they played him all 54 snaps there and he did who would have thought particularly darn well uh i don't they list him as offensive lineman uh may i think more so he's gonna end up being a guard like he he was pretty solid at right tackle to begin the year but that was kent state colorado you can't i don't know if you can really trust too much we'll see more of them this year see where they plug them but yeah i get it the giants they need guard help um who's the next tackle off the board potentially at this point for me it's a chem uh uh ek ekwanu Icky from NC State. I'm really high on that cat right now. Uh, some people really like um, Darian Kennard, but th that's another guy. Is he guard at the next level? He's been playing good football too, but I don't, I don't think he's top 10 worthy at this point. You could make a case for Tyler Linderbaum. I'm a big Linderbaum guy, dude. Big Linderbaum guy. But for me, Kenyon Green, I don't think he's done enough this season to really say, hey, he's top 10, top 15. Uh, but I, I do, I get the potential. I get the potential. Uh, wow. Pittsburgh Steelers. Is this the first? Yeah, this is the first quarterback off the board. Malik Willis going to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I love this. This is awesome. I think Malik Willis, I would have taken a bit early, but this is probably where he's about at on a lot of people, maybe, maybe a lot of people's, uh, big boards. Cause they're not sold on the quarterback class, but still. The value of the quarterback position can't be understated. Uh, Steelers, Big Ben, ain't looking great. Oh, man, now he's beat up again. I think it's the hip. I can't remember, but it sounds like he plays this week. Uh, yeah, nah. You got to move on from Big Ben, man. You got to start anew. He's He is he has not been good. He's not been good. Uh, the Philadelphia Eagles, they go one of my favorite prospects, DeMarvin Lille out of texas a&m this cat's been great my question is what role do you see for him in this philly defense uh is he a guy that you're gonna kick inside you just invested i think it's was it a second rounder second or third rounder on uh milton williams at a louisiana tech uh do you plan on him playing next to him i mean hargraves playing good football fletcher Cl cox is still playing wonderful football so is Lil maybe that guy you put on the outside? Because, you know, Brandon Graham, he's up there in dog ears. Um, Sweat's a guy probably coming back. I can't see Derek Barnett coming back. I mean, maybe on a one-year deal potentially. But, yeah, I just have a few questions on what's the plan here. Um, here we go. Uh, okay, the whole idea is to move this cat around. So, okay, uh, I don't mind that. I don't mind that at all. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals, they're picking a 10. Kyrie Elam, I like this pick. Get them a number one uh, corner as fast as possible. I believe that's great. Trey Waynes didn't look so hot this year, or didn't look so hot this past game against Jacksonville. And, like, you know, with all honesty, I would say, I would say Awuzie's looked pretty solid. Uh, Darius Phillips is a nice depth piece. He's a guy you really just want to call on when you need need him. So I think the Bengals, man, finally, I really feel like they're 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 moving in the right direction defensively. I for like the last couple of years, I've been like, I have no idea what they want to do defensively. It looks like it's just kind of this big hodgepodge mess, but it's all starting to come together finally. They got the they've gotten the right parts in there. So good on them. Good on them. Uh, shame on me for downing them, but no, it is what it is. The Philadelphia Eagles, this is the Dolphins pick. <laughs> uh, they're going with Darian Kennard, man. Uh, I don't think I mind this pick. Uh, I mean, okay, this this cat would have to be on the interior. So probably a Brandon Brooks replacement for the future. Because uh, I don't think you put him at right tackle. I mean... Unless you want to move on from Lane Johnson. Is that the case? Let's take a quick look here at Philly's offensive line. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Because Malata, he got paid big money. 
And he's playing like it too. The dude's been phenomenal. Uh, at the other. Well, okay. Say what? Hold up. Has Andre Dillard been playing right this year? Yo, good on him. No, he hasn't. Andre Dillard has been splitting with Mulata. Okay. Mulata is playing really good football, but Dillard's looking pretty solid himself. Uh, guess what, Lane Johnson? He's playing good. Who would have thought? He's pretty darn good in that role. Uh, Simalu is, is doing good. I got to imagine it's Brandon Brooks, man. Like, okay. The thing is, Landon Dickerson has yet to play center. They've been playing him at guard. So do you move him into guard? Because Jason Kelsey, he's still playing at a high level, by the way. Jason Kelsey's still playing at a high level. But another guy they could move on from in the future. I don't know. We'll see. This is a bit interesting. I think this is definitely this is, this is something for the future and not right, like something that could help out immediately right now. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm fine with it. Uh, Sam Howell going to the Washington football team. I like this. Uh, Ron Rivera is going to like Sam Howell because he's got a big boy arm. He's got some athletic ability. I think, you know, when he gets to the NFL, it's going to be, you know, uh, he's definitely going to seem not as athletic. But I think he's I think he's definitely more mobile than some of the quarterbacks there in the NFL currently. Um, he is an upgrade over Heineke. I do agree. He's got a bigger arm. So, yeah, I like it. Chris Olave, I go on to the Patriots. Olave, there we go. Uh, I kind of prefer Wilson in here because Olave is a bit more of the same of what they already have with like a Nelson Aguilar. But I get it. Olave, he's a guy you could dump it off to. He's he's shown he can do do a lot after the catch. I think this season, for me, man, Garrett Wilson, Olave, they're really they're really. They're throwing blows, man. For me, though, that's the battle for who will be the top receiver taken in this class. And I think then it's the rest of the class. Lobby is really good, so I don't mind this at all. Ma Gardner going to the Eagles. This is the Colts pick, by the way. I like this a lot. I think he could be really good in Gannon's defense. Because um, like, they, they've been playing a lot of, a lot of cover three and i mean that's essentially man at some point uh they've been pressing i like it steven nelson's looked good in that role and he's he nor he normally plays for man heavy coverages but he's been looking good in that role i think gardner kind of falls under the same uh category in that regard so i really i'm intrigued by their draft uh i'm not gonna lie y'all man i might go receiver at some point like if I'm the Eagles, I'd be tempted. I'd be tempted. I don't know. We'll see. It's a long season. We'll find out. But, yeah. Yeah, the Eagles are going to end up with three first-round picks. It's going to be beautiful. Maybe they should trade for Sean Watson. Carolina Panthers, they go Drake Jackson at USC. I'm confused. Um, I think the Panthers have had a mean pass. Like, their defense in general has been nasty this season. Uh, we already know that the secondary is kind of filthy. Now they added Stephon Gilmore. But in terms of pass rush, like, Brian Burns has been a monster. Hassan Reddick, I imagine, they got to re-sign that cat. Like, even Morgan Fox, I a very under underrated sign-in has been really good. Uh, Yatir Gross Matos, he's only been on the field for a few snaps. I don't know if he's been hurt or not, but still, he's 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 been solid on 18 pass rush snaps, five pressures. That's pretty darn good. So, yeah, I mean, I I get I get it. I guess if Hassan Reddick, you know, they don't bring him back, because Drake Jackson, he he would essentially be the Hassan Reddick. You want Jackson to be kind of like this nine tech. To where he does his best, man. He's got great movement skills. He has been dominating. I think he's kind of creeping into that tier with uh, Aiden Hutchinson and Kingsley Negbari. I think he's kind of creeping into that that tier. Like Drake Jackson, what we've wanted to see from him is consistency, and we have seen it. I like it. 
Uh, Minnesota Vikings. This is a surprise. Maisha Sanders going to the Vikings. Um, I get it. I I often like getting the Vikings a edge defender, but uh, every now and then people will bring them to the comment in the comment section. They never go with edge in the first round, which uh, yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. They really don't. So maybe they stick with uh, going with corner because we know we know the tried and true the Vikings seems like they're always drafting corner in the first round because what we had Mike Hughes, um, Gladney recently. So yeah, maybe they go that way again. I like Myers Sanders. People are gonna be like, man, this guy's got no sacks. Yeah, neither did uh, Owe. Owe didn't have no sacks. People were like. I don't respect the guys. Pass rush if you can't get sacks. Okay, look at the pressure rate. See how they're doing. Actually, let's go ahead and do that right now. Screw that. We're going to do it right now. My Jill Sanders. Yeah, because I know his pressure rate's been pretty darn good this year. And keep in mind, this guy's playing like over the tackle in a 3-4 scheme, I think is what they got going on there in um, Cincinnati. Let's see. 17 pressures. On 118 pass rushing snaps. So the pressure rate is pretty decent. And I mean, dude, four pressures against Notre Dame. Um, he had six against Indiana. The guy's been good, man. He's not hitting home like he did last year. But but the dude's... Keep in mind, man, there's a lot more eyes on Sanders right now than there were last year, too. So... And, in terms of there's there's teams game planning for this cat so i think he's he's done just fine uh 16 does maybe feel a bit high like by like with kingsley and nagbari still on the board i i feel like that's a guy i might go with but yeah the las vegas raiders with the mike mayock pick of jordan davis uh update guess what um Alex Leatherwood. Apparently, they're they're kicking him into guard. So, who would have thought? Who would have thought? A lot a, a guy that a lot of people thought a hey, probably ends up projecting better as a guard, but it's worth a shot. Maybe trying him at tackle. Tackle experiments kind of failed from the get go. Uh, not to say he, he might not be able to get better. It's very early, obviously, in his development, but. Uh, guard does feel like the more natural position for him in the NFL. But that's all about Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis is a guy that, yeah, a lot of people like including in the first round right now. I get it. He has improved as a pass rusher, but not nearly as much as I would like. Like, I get it. He's a, he's a nose tackle that just loves to impose his will. But I don't think he's as good as a pass rusher as you kind of need to be to be considered a first round prospect in in the um for the interior like i don't consider him a Derek brown i don't consider him a javon kinlaw like i don't think he has those guys type of upside and like even brown dude he went on a tear during the last half of uh of his season at auburn in terms of his pass rushing so like yeah, I don't know. Like, this feels a bit rich for me, but it's also the Raiders. Raiders do stuff like that. Um, I mean, at least this guy, for a lot of people, is at least considered a first-rounder. Like, for me, like, Davis, I, I don't mind him creeping in as a late first-rounder, but 17 is just too rich. Uh, Saints get Garrett Wilson. That's wonderful. I like this pick a lot. I, uh, is there much to talk about? I don't think so. <laughs> uh, round one, pick 19. Matt Corral going to the Broncos. Teddy Bridgewater, I think he's a fine quarterback that he's done a good job with that Broncos team. He doesn't make costly mistakes. He's good at managing the offense. But I don't think he brings the spark that this offense needs. Matt Corral can do that. If you want to be critical about him on the Alabama game, Poor Matt Corral was left for dead in that game. His offensive line did him no, did him a disservice. I think Matt Corral for in that game, the pressure that he was getting, like dude was had pressure in his face consistently, like down to down. 
for him not to really make a poor decision i would say in that game really speaks like i don't think he did anything to lose his team the game but man dude like they it just it, it's it was unfair it was unfair Yo, Titans, I like this. Kingsley and Agbari. I don't often see this cat in a lot of mocks. I don't know why people aren't more on to this cat. He has been dominant, dude. I think outside of Aiden Hutchinson, Anagbari has been the most dominant edge rusher in college football. The guy has been just getting home consistently. I like it. And he's doing this against SEC talent. So I like it. I like it a lot. Um, in terms of what does this do for the Titans? Because I know Harold Landry is a free agent, but you can't imagine like I don't, I can't see that. I can't see the Titans parting ways with Harold Landry at this point. I, I think sooner they would get rid of Bud Dupree, and they're kind of like they're stuck with him for what a few years, right? Because eighty million dollars, man, that's they overpaid. I like this cat a lot, though. I like this cat a lot. Uh, maybe get him involved. He is a bit raw, but you know he can be. Phys he's physically imposing. He is. He's a very violent. Uh, the physical skill set, the physical upsides there. So he's maybe a guy you bring around along a bit slowly. Uh, New York Jets. This is their second pick from Seattle. They go Zion Nelson. Listen, I'm a Hurricanes fan. Do you? Do you? Do you? Zion Nelson ain't a first rounder. I would sooner take Charles Cross, and I'm not a big fan of Charles Cross, than I would take Nelson at this point. Poor Zion Nelson. He kind of feels like the same player he was last year. I was hoping him to take that next step. I realistically think he is a guy that ends up maybe coming out, staying this year and coming out in the 2023 class because he is technically a true junior. But yeah, yeah, I like him a lot. I get it. Athletic upside. He'd be a really good scheme fit here, but uh, I, I, I think this is a reach at this point. Uh, the Miami Dolphins is their pick from San Francisco. Get Christian Harris. Wonderful pick, by the way. Uh, might not be the top linebacker on my board. I like the fit, though. If you're expecting your linebackers to play a lot of man coverage, Christian Harris is your guy. He can do that. He can hang with tight ends, guys in the slot. He can hang with running backs. Uh, maybe needs a clean up as a tackler a little bit. The missed tackle rate's a bit high, um, higher than it is normally. But I like this scheme. I like how I like you bring in a player that is extremely athletic and that can just be a good scheme fit in general. Uh, Traylon Burks going to the San Diego, San Diego, ho, oh, Los Angeles Chargers. Uh, if they don't re sign Mike Williams. But but he, okay then this I think this makes sense. But like Keenan will or Keenan Allen, Mike Williams, Traylon Burks, fuel for nightmare. I mean they got Josh Palmer, which uh, granted it's a third like what he was a third rounder, but still like I don't know like I get it Burks is a nice slot option, but they really like Keenan Allen in that role. Like I feel like you go different a variety of different ways i feel like maybe the defense needs more attention maybe you go out and try to grab a right tackle in this class uh who would be on the board then like that would be a fit like i like ken i like kenyon green more so in this area of the draft or this area of the first round um oh man maybe you go icky maybe not man i like icky better in a gap but like the dude can move for his size uh Kenyard or Kennard be nice. Um Nicholas Petit Frere, but he's playing better at left tackle than he did at right. Hmm, that's a good question. That's a good question. Uh Aiden Hutchinson finally comes off the board. This is an utter steal for the Cowboys. I think he's gonna go a lot higher than this. Um, I think he's probably top 10, top 15 at this point. The guy's crushing it. He's doing good. Uh, Parsons looks like he's going to be uh, potentially like I don't, he might play more of a linebacker type role with Jalen Smith gone, but I don't think so. I think they like what the what they got going on with Parsons. 
Maybe they're going to just get involved. Maybe Keanu Neal, um, Jabril Cox more. We'll see. We'll see. I should be wearing the Cox shirt, the Cox hoodie. Dang it, dude. Go check out my Teespring shop. It should be down below. It's got some fun merch there. Trent McDuffie going to the Cardinals. I don't like it. I get it. They were able to do it with Bry uh, Bry Byron Murphy. They were able to bring him along while maybe schematically he doesn't fit this defense after like what three seasons now it seems like oh he's acclimated into this defense and now he's he's playing extremely well why are you gonna do that again like i get it i like trent mcduffie a lot too but uh uh i don't know i would say trent mcduffie i think trent mcduffie is a bit more skilled than uh murphy but mm. Tyler Linderbaum going to Cleveland, man. A lot of people not talking about this. I'm pretty sure uh, J.C. Treader, and I think they mentioned it right here, is a free agent after 2022, I think. So Linderbaum would be that guy to bridge the gap. I think he'd be a good fit for this defense, or this offensive line, excuse me, this blocking scheme. So I actually like this. Linderbaum probably goes in this area just because of um, positional value. But, man, he's really good. Oh, uh, the Ravens. They get my boy Icky out of NC State. I get it. This is a beautiful scheme fit. Like, I like how this goes. But, man, I just feel like this guy's going to be rising up boards a ton. Uh, the Green Bay Packers. They're going to go with N'Kobe Dean. I kind of like this. Like, if you're going to get a... If you're going to get... Like, if you're going to run a lot of sub packages, which the Packers do that more so than any other team or a lot of teams in the NFL, then if you're really just going to have one linebacker, a linebacker on the field, then go ahead and get a guy that can be physical around the line of scrimmage, that you're bringing on blitzes, that's a great athlete. That's kind of Dean. You kind of worry about him being a bit undersized at six foot, 225. But I think it's fine. Uh, he he plays with a lot of a lot of steam, a lot of explosiveness, a lot of momentum. That's how he stacks his blockers. He doesn't win with strength. You know, he wins with momentum. So, yeah. Uh Drake London going to the Lions. I love me Drake London. For me, he's he's probably going to be ah, it's really tough to say, man. He might be my wide receiver. 3. I really do love Drake London. I love Drake London to the Packers specifically, but I've talked a lot about that. But Lions go in there, they get a receiver. Um, he doesn't really fit what they, well, at least how they approach free agency because London's more of a guy that's going to be like this possession, um, contested catch guy that can make moves, can create after the catch. Uh, I think he's like second or third in force missed tackles currently in college football. The guy's just been great this year. Darion Kendrick going to Buffalo. Not a lot of people are talking. Kendrick's having a wonderful year, by the way, uh, there in Georgia. Not a lot of people are talking about it. This guy has, like, he has, he should be in that first-round discussion. You just got to worry about the character stuff. Like, how he ended his career there at Clemson, it wasn't pretty. So, you got to worry about that. But I'm not going to be like, hey, he's not a first-rounder. I think he is. Devin Lloyd, he's my top linebacker. Going to the Bucks. So, this is obviously a replacement eventual replacement for Levante David because Lloyd's a guy you could also come in and use as a pass rusher you don't necessarily have to like you have to take White or David off the field to have Lloyd on the field as well so you could definitely get him in the mix there like Devin Lloyd's really good he might not be like the type of explosive athlete that uh Her Christian Harris that uh Nicobe Dean or uh Henry Toto is but he plays he plays the linebacker position far better, man. This guy is very good as a blitzer, and I think he does enough in coverage to not be a liability. Very good tackler. He's going to be a very good run defender. This dude's really good. And then for the final pick, everyone and their mom thinks the Chiefs need more wide receivers. I if you're in that I'm, if you're in that group, you're like, oh man, we got to replenish that wide receiver position. Your defense sucks, man. Come on. Pass rush? This is the right draft to address pass rush. This edge class is so good and so deep. Like, get some guys that can really...
really play on the defense that you can develop and make this defense worthwhile because right now that defense is holding them back man it really is so yeah i get it i like pickens a lot i think he's gonna pop off of the combine and people are gonna rem like remember oh man yeah he's kind of legit he he could be a first rounder like he's a prototypical x receiver in the nfl and i think he'd have a lot of success there uh but yeah no nah, dude they need edge they need help they need defense uh their pass rush has just been booty cheeks but that's it for the video let me know what you think in the comment section below uh typically with this these cbs drafts i expect way worse i thought this one was pretty tamed um i think the only picks i outright like this one i'm i'm not really gonna disagree with like i disagree with the scheme fit but they've done it in the past that kind of makes sense i think aiden hutchinson's way too low Traylon burks is kind of uh, I, I i don't get it for the chargers uh zion nelson just me thinking i don't think he's gonna come out um Elijah Sanders, oh, I uh, I understand, I guess. I don't know. This isn't a bad draft by any means. I thought this was actually fairly good. Um, except for like these two these two cats. It's just I think they're falling down a lot of people's boards. But we'll see. Long season. But let me know. Again, let me know what you think in the comment section below. That's it for the video. Go ahead and do that YouTube theme. And until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.